Hey everybody, welcome back to week 16, or 16th dig into the book of Exodus. Um, today, we are just reviewing a, a few things about um, the people of God in, on their journey. Uh, today's story reveals that the people of God were really um, learning how to serve the Lord and to give gifts to the Lord and make sacrifices. So right now we don't sacrifice animals anymore because Jesus came and became that final sacrifice for us. So we don't need to sacrifice animals, but we still bring our sacrifices and our gifts to the Lord. So I just wanted to show you in our church building today, um, ways that people do that. So one way is by um, putting offerings or ties and offerings into the offering plate as it's passed down um, the row. But we actually don't do that a whole lot anymore because of COVID. And so we actually have um, offering boxes that were made by a gentleman in our church. His name is Mike List. And there's a cool little envelope that you can fill out and put the amount of money that you want to sacrifice and give to the Lord um, to do the work of the church. But there's all kinds of ways that people serve the church. Um, you can serve if you have a gift of music, if you have a gift of technology with behind the scenes. Maybe you have the, the gift of finances and you can help with with the books, like being the treasure, or maybe you're a leader, and so being on a church board would be a cool idea. Or maybe you have a gift of working with the children, and so hanging out in this cool nursery might be your thing. There's lots of different ways that we can serve the Lord. And so today I pray, even at your young ages, that the Lord reveals to you the ways that you can serve and offer sacrifices to the Lord. Maybe it's just learning to start to save a portion of the money that you get to give back to God, give back to the Lord, to be used for the Lord's purposes and have the chance to use it, to put it in your own offering envelope um, and in our offering boxes made by Mike List. Or maybe um, it's a chance as you get older to work with the kids once a month um, to, to help organize um, events at the church. Maybe it's really just being a good friend at school or a good neighbor and serving the people around you in the ways that God's gifted you to. Um, I know in my own house, I have one kid who likes to serve quietly and I have one kid who likes to serve and let people know that they're serving. Um, and so I know that there's that there's God has gifted you in different ways. And I just pray again that as we read today's scripture, and you think about the ways that God has gifted you, that you're able to say, yeah, I have that gift I know, and I want to use it. So I'd love for you to have a conversation with me at the end of this video, talking about ways that God has gifted you to serve his people. See you soon. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Exodus 20. Verse 12, Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20, verse 12. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20, verse 12. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20, verse 12. Exodus 20, verse 12. How old are you? I'm three. You three? Yeah. Can you say one, two, three? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's that time again. If you would gather your materials and fill in any blanks if you are following along on your workbooks or if you want to open up your own Bibles to Exodus chapter 25, starting at the very beginning of Exodus chapter 25. This is what it says. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering from me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them, gold, silver, and bronze, 
blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, and another type of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make, make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Have them make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold, both inside and out, and make a gold molding around it. Cast four gold rings for it and fasten them to its four feet, with two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it. The poles are to remain in the rings of this ark. They are not to be removed. Then put in the ark the tablets of the covenant law, which I will give you. Make an atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, and make two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. Make one cherub on one end and the second cherub on the other. Make the cherubim of one piece with the cover at the two ends. The cherubim are to have their wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim are to face each other, looking toward the cover. Place the cover on top of the ark, and put in the ark the tablets of the covenant law that I will give you. There, above the cover, between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the covenant law, I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our 16th dig into the book of Exodus. A few things to remind us of our, our learnings today. One is that God desires to be so close um, to his people. That's us. And God doesn't force any of us to serve the Lord. God wants us to come with a willing heart and mind to serve and worship the Lord. Sacrifice. That's a big word. It means you're going to give up something or we're going to give up something important to do or something difficult in order to please the Lord. It could be a special gift. It could be, it could be money. It could be um, fasting food or fasting technology, but it's a sacrifice um, for the sole purpose of giving it to God. Interesting things today. One is acacia wood, and that's just an orange-brown colored wood from a large thorny tree that was really hard, and insects had a really hard time, you know, eating it and decaying it, so it was very durable, solid wood. An ephod, that's just a special vest or clothing that the high priest wore when he served at the altar, so when he served um, his turn in the temple, that's what he would wear um, as the high priest. And then the tabernacle, as you know, like in our godly playroom, it's the tent, which served as the Israelites' place of worship. So we go to a church building that's like our tabernacle, and then God would meet God's people there at the tabernacle. Uh, the cherubim, or a cherub, are really just angels who often serve as messengers from the Lord. So the angel that came to see Mary would be called a cherub. Uh, an angel, a messenger of God. And then the last word is a cubit, which is really just a measurement. It's about 18 inches. So it's probably like your dad or grandpa's foot size, one and a half shoe sizes. It's 18 inches. That's a cubit. And here's some questions I'd like to ask you. So if you're journaling or you're writing um, these questions down somewhere or you're having a discussion with those around you or just a discussion with me, I'd like you to think and answer these out loud if you're if you're willing. The first question is, I wonder what gifts God has given to you. What are the gifts God has given you? I wonder if you could name one or two. Second question, I wonder what gifts God is asking you to give back to God. I wonder of those gifts, what's God asking you to give and to sacrifice today? And the third question, 
I wonder what you can do today to make an offering to the Lord. I wonder what that might look like for you. Let's pray together as we close out this time. God, thank you for the people that have gone before us that show us examples of how to make sacrifices and how to worship you. I pray that you would speak to our hearts and our minds and that we would know how we are to make those sacrifices and uh, to worship you. Help us as a, as a church community, as a church worldwide, to know how to worship you in all that we say and do so that others would know that you are the one true king, the one true God that we serve. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love you. Hope to see you very soon.